Hi, I'm Sam Margulies, and I'm a divorce mediator. Hi, I'm Sam Margulies, and today I'm going to tell you how to tell your spouse that you want a divorce. This is often a difficult thing for people to do, and a lot of people find it so intimidating that they hold off for a long time because they can't figure out how to do it. So today I'm going to tell you how to do it well and how to do it in such a way that you move towards a good divorce. Now how divorces begin often shape the tone of the entire divorce. If they begin with anger and recrimination, they tend to stay that way. If they begin peacefully, then you have a good chance of having a good divorce. But before I talk to you about telling your spouse, you need to understand one of the most important psychological facts of divorce. Few divorces begin by mutual decision. In most divorces, one of the partners reaches the decision of divorce first. We call that person the initiator. The initiator has an advantage over the other partner who we call the non-initiator. The initiator has had plenty of time to think about divorce. The initiator has had time to grieve the failure of the marriage, has had time to develop a vision of a better future, so the divorce represents moving on to something better from the perspective of the initiator. Now, although the initiator is aware that the divorce involves losses, he or she is also aware of the gains it can bring. And so for this person, the gains of the divorce outweigh the losses. So for the initiator, the divorce represents something that will improve his or her life. The non-initiator is another story. The other spouse, when told about a divorce, can be anywhere on a continuum of resigned acceptance on the one extreme to total shock on the other. Now, the closer the two parties are in their acceptance of divorce, the better will be the couple's ability to negotiate. But if the non-initiator is totally surprised and doesn't want the divorce, it's going to take considerable time for that partner to come to terms with it. And this is where the patience of the initiator becomes important. When the unprepared non-initiator is pushed too fast into the divorce, things are going to deteriorate into litigation. You must give that person time. Remember, for the initiator in this condition, divorce is only about losses. There are no gains. The initiator has not had time to figure out how the divorce might improve life. So where the initiator is, an, is optimistic and positive, the non-initiator is negative and pessimistic. So if you're ready to tell your spouse that you want a divorce, remember that you're ready, he or she may not be ready. Now, telling your spouse is the beginning of the divorce. And if you want a gentle divorce, you have to make a gentle beginning. So how do you do it? Well, what you don't do is begin by telling your spouse that you want a divorce and it's all his or her fault. The worst thing you can do the telling your spouse is not about blaming. What you say is that the marriage has not been successful, it can't be fixed, it can't continue, and that neither of you are happy. Having said that, stick to the theme. Now, once you've said it, you have to be prepared to listen to an angry response, possibly a lot of recrimination, a lot of blame and accusations. And as you hear these things, it's important that you don't defend yourself and that you don't retaliate to provocative statements.
To such accusations you only reply, this is no longer about fault and blame. The marriage is over. It's time to make a decent end of it. Now, there are three critical elements in your message. One we've just talked about. You have to say this is not about blame. And I'm not going to discuss blame and fault, either now or in the future. A second thing is that you've thought long and hard and have reluctantly concluded that this is a necessary thing to do, that your decision is irrevocable, and you will not change your mind. Now, that's important, because if you try to make things seem easier by leaving open a door for possible reconciliation, then that's going to be the sole focus of your spouse. Finally and third, you're confident that the two of you can work out a fair and decent plan for the family. Be careful. This is not the time to discuss issues. Statements like, I won't leave the house, or you better not touch my pension, need to be met by. I'm sure that when the time comes to discuss those things, we'll both be fair and responsible, but this is not the time. Guilty accusations are treated the same way. How could you do this to the children? This is going to destroy them. Your response has to be, I'm sure that working together, we can get the kids through this without them getting hurt. Yeah, divorce is painful, but it doesn't have to injure them. You're going to ignore threats. You're going to ignore uh, negative statements. And you're not going to make them yourselves. So whenever your spouse, at this point, says something negative or accusatory, you just repeat, I'm sure we can work this out when the time comes to do it. Now, you also need to tell him or her that you know that some time will be needed and that you're prepared to wait until you're both ready to have discussions about the future. You tell him or her that you're not about to hire a lawyer. And you hope that the two of you will be able to use a mediator rather than fight through two lawyers. And then you listen. And listen until your spouse is done talking. You maintain calm and you don't respond to provocation. When all has been said, you exit, saying you'll return in a few hours and you'll then be available to talk some more. This is a strategy that works, but it requires your self-discipline. I'm sure you can do it well. For more information on any of these topics, go to my website, follow me on Twitter, Facebook, look at my books on Amazon, or if you'd like, call me.